Uh, so I, I went back to say namaste to, to Brian and Michael, and uh, Brian has this whole new drum set, and there's like a gazillion cymbals. And I said, wow, you have got some cymbals. And he said, I can symbolize anything. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, one Sunday morning in the uh, church lobby, between services, the minister was uh, just passing through the lobby, going to his office, and he saw young Johnny standing, looking up at this plaque on the wall. And little Johnny was just standing there, looking at it, reading it. And so the minister walked up to him and said, Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Reverend, Johnny said. And together they just stared at the plaque and looked. Finally, Johnny said, Reverend, what is that? And the minister said, well, Johnny, that's a plaque. We're honoring all the people who died in the service. And Johnny just got really quiet and could barely hear his voice when he said, which one, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m.? <laughs> I love these virtues. You can go all over the place with them. They apply in our lives. In every gospel, interestingly enough, and that's not true with all the stories that we read, but in every one of the four gospels, we read about, in different variations, about a woman who comes to Jesus, and she brings with her a large container, a pint, it said, a large container of precious oil, it's often referred to as perfume, that has a fragrance that is beyond description. And she takes this oil and pours it, all of it, on Jesus' feet. It's also said that she poured oil on his head. And the disciples were upset, Judas in particular, because he kept the treasury. Why, why was that okay? Why did you allow her to pour that precious oil on your feet and, and waste it? We could have turned that into money. We could have fed so many people with the money we got from that oil. And Jesus said, let it be. In essence, he said and turned to the woman who was thought to be a prostitute. He said, your sins are forgiven. He said to the disciple who questioned this, and I think all of them pretty much did, the reason for this is that she poured the oils. She poured out the oils of honor upon the Christ within me. You and I are called to pour the oil of inclusive love out upon each and every situation we see. This inclusive love that Jesus carried was very unique. It was unusual. It was shocking to the Jewish population of the time because they had laws in place that made that impossible, punishable, actually. Inclusive love supersedes any ancient laws or rules or regulations that we, you and I, have held in the Old Testament of our lives. In Levitical law, it actually said that no one can you imagine who was differently gifted? No one with disabilities or deformities could even come into the house of God, could even enter the temple. No one who was unclean, no one who had sinned in any way, missed the mark in any way, could be in this house of God. Can you imagine? <laughs> How many of us would be in here this morning? <laughs> I wouldn't be up here speaking, I know that. Because we miss the mark sometimes in our lives, but Jesus recognized something else taking place. We're not ever outside the love of God, not because of who we're born as or what culture we're living in, how we contextualize God, whether or not we recognize the love of God because of what we've eaten or some conditionality that we're moving through. Now, when Jesus came along, he honored everyone, and it was shocking. 
Can you imagine? A man who could see the faults, see the mistakes that others made, see that they had, we had sinned, missed the mark, and still was able to see our divinity, still able to proclaim that he and we are one with God. He trafficked, I'm so glad, with fishermen, with thieves, with prostitutes, with tax collectors, with foreigners. Imagine that. Samaritans. And you know what he called them? You know what we're here to call each other? Brothers and sisters of the same God, one God, one power, one presence in which we all live and move and have our being. When we honor others, we get to see them, get to see ourselves just as we are. When we honor others, we can meet each other right there. Whoever you are and wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you're welcome in a place that teaches that kind of Christianity, first century Christianity, and doesn't hold others at bay. We're here to accept ourselves as we are and move on. It doesn't mean that we don't have boundaries that are meant to be healthy or habits that we can clean up in our lives. It doesn't mean that. It means that the truth of us is that which sets us free. And according to divine law, actually then, which works negatively and positively, complaints just beget complaints. Anger begets anger. Love begets love. Joy begets joy. It's like that. Over and over and over again. And looking for and finding opportunities, and that's what the call is today for you and I to look for and find opportunities to say kind words to another. Opportunities to encourage each other. That always lifts every single person up. Joe Hawley, did you happen to notice the flowers today? Yeah. Joe Hawley was looking for a way to honor us here today for this particular virtue uh, at Unity of Naples. And he found a way, didn't he? In an exquisite way. Joe Hawley, yeah. You want to raise your hand there, Joe? Go ahead, raise your hand, stand up. Let's see who Joe Hawley is. That's Joe Hawley. (laughs) So how young was Joe when God started moving through him to beautify our world? Joe was six years old when he started making flower arrangements. Six. By the time he was 18, he had his own company called Distinctive Designs. And in the Boston area, for 36 years, he was like the go-to designer. He went in to do the World Trade Center. He did the flowers at the Harvard Club. He did the flowers in so many places that it was too much. Anybody ever done too much in in your life? Yeah? It was too much. It caused stress in his life, and he didn't like that part of it. But what Joe loves is he loves giving people, like you and like me, a sense of joy. As we look at what he has created, I spoke with him yesterday morning, and he said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Think about it. Flowers are transient. Flowers are temporal. These flowers are here in their full beauty, blooming, and they will be gone very soon. So he said, each time, you know, you can plan it out to some extent, but each time what you, go, what you actually have before you is the materials that are fresh. You have whatever is before you to use, to arrange that, to make of that a beautiful place, and isn't that what it is to honor our lives and to honor each other as we're going through whatever we're going through. I don't care how deep the swamp is or how messed up it looks. We're here to help hold the space of beauty with each other. And to create that. These, this arrangement had to be last minute. He said to me, I'm getting off the phone. Uh, I'm going to get off the phone and go to Fresh Market and see what they have. He had to go and see what God put before him and then arrange it in such a way that you and I could feel the love of God. This kind of arrangement has, because of its beauty, has a fragrance that goes way past when the flowers go away. There's a memory that you and I were honored by somebody caring enough to do something, arrange something in our name. 
in Christ's light. And so that's how this special touch happens. He said he loves uh, helping people, say, who are moving through a time of grief, celebrating the life of a loved one, because he, he knows that flowers console them. He loves giving a special touch to occasions, um, like weddings, so that people will remember them, take photographs of them, and, and through the years, just be amazed at how God blooms and blossoms in their lives. Joe Hawley gave you this as a gift today. Take a mental picture of it. Go ahead. Go ahead and click. Just take a picture of it. Because that is meant to represent the love that God has for you and has always had for you and will always have for you that has never changed. No matter what you've done. No matter what you've said. No matter where you've gone or not gone. God has always Pure love and energy has always sustained you. And so you may you carry that with you. This arrangement, to me, is just a ta-da. Isn't it? So, Joe, thank you so much. We look forward to you doing this again and whenever you like. Thank you, God. <laughs> the point is to just start giving honor away. Why not? Just start giving it away and watch in wonder as God pours out blessings and miracles upon you. That's how it is. You and I just start pouring and the oil never ceases. On Thursday night, David and I went out to an Italian restaurant, which I, won't, I will not name for you, but it was, you know, we have a lot of Italian restaurants here in Naples, don't you? That's Napoli, you know? Yeah. And um, it's a wonderful restaurant. We've been there before. Well, and when we came in, we said, we're going to a movie, so we're on a time crunch. You know, we've got it. So what should we order? What shouldn't we order? And, and we were told what dishes could be faster, and we did. We ordered those dishes. David's pasta came out, and I said, go ahead. You know, we had our prayer, and go ahead and please start eating. And he did. And he was nearly finished with his uh, plate of pasta when my salmon arrived. And it was salmon tartare. It was like not cooked yet. <laughs> and I said, this is not tuna, this is salmon, so can we please have, uh, would you be willing to cook it? So you're looking at our watches, you know, and, and uh, wow, the waiter couldn't have been nicer. And we just thanked him. Thank you so much. He was concerned. He was sorry. He was, you know, apologetic, and yet he was very busy, and we just thanked him. He brought the bill, and I paid the bill. It was, the bill was in full. And I had the salmon in a little bag to, take for, to have later. And when he came up to me, I said, you know, you just held the space of peace with us while that was happening. And I want to thank you because I know you were put in, a, in an awkward situation. So thank you so much. It, you were amazing. And he said, you bet. And uh, I looked down at the bill as I was signing it. And he put a little card there. And he said, that's a coupon card for another salmon dinner or whatever you'd like to have at our restaurant. I was like, he didn't have to do that. We don't have to honor each other as we go through life, but when we do, it makes everything so sweet. Think about it. Who could you honor today? Is there a family member that you've not spoken with for a while or that you uh, might just call up? You know, God has given us so many modalities. Have you missed any opportunities to compliment someone? If you have, don't worry, it's never too late. You can, in fact, text them, email them, Facebook them, FaceTime them. You can write them a card, still send it in the mail. You can call them on your cell phone. You can even use your iPad, I think, some of them. There are so many ways to communicate, but what are we going to communicate? Today, I'm inviting you to be mindful of what it is that you're sharing. To honor yourself and honor others by sharing the love of God. For as you sow, you will reap. If you're thinking for one moment, well, I'm, I will, excuse me, I will honor him when he honors me, right? I will call her when she calls me, right? Honor that person anyway. Shock them with how loving and kind you can be. If nothing else, it'll make them wonder what you've been up to. <laughs> Making feel, people feel special is just is a mission. 
And it's a mission to brighten each other's days. It's a, it's a game changer. In 2 Samuel, David does this. He sets out, it says in the Bible, he sets out to honor others, to look for and find someone to share a kind word with. What if each day, and I'm going to invite you to do this as you set out from this place today, to set out to find somebody, because God's going to put that person right before you, somebody, and after that somebody, turn and see the next somebody, and the next somebody, and the next opportunity, because you never know. But you're sowing seeds of love, you're sowing seeds of kindness, and they will return to you, though you and I can never know exactly when that's going to happen. I, I had the thought about my, my mother's life in terms of sowing and reaping. And I remembered a, a story that she told me about having been at Unity of Fairfax. She was there at an off time. And the front doors were open. She had been teaching class, and the class was finished. And she walked into the sanctuary to make sure the lights were off, and there was a woman in the sanctuary, a fairly young woman, who was sitting in a chair sobbing. She'd never met her before, a very blonde-haired woman by the name of Jackie. And so my mother just came up to her and sat down next to her. She didn't say anything to her. She just held the space with her while Jackie sobbed. And then eventually Jackie reached out and took my mother's hand. And as you can imagine, they became friends, not only friends, but fast friends. Years and years later, And then actually kind of lost touch. But my mother reached out to Jackie to see how she was doing. My mom had just uh, contracted pancreatic cancer. And she was just at a place where she wanted to love everybody who'd ever loved her. She wanted to make those calls, you know, while she was still on the earth plane. So she reached out to Jackie. And Jackie shared with her that her life had turned around. When she was crying and sobbing in the church, it was because her husband had left her with her children. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know where to turn. But Jackie had, yes, divorced, and she had remarried. And she'd remarried a man who, uh, by the name of of Greg, who became a um, surgeon. And he was the lead surgeon at Johns Hopkins University. My mom said, oh, yeah, what, what kind of surgery does he do? And she said, well, it's a specialty surgery. It's not one that is usual. People send, are sent from all over the United States and the world to have him do this. It's something called a, a Whipple surgery. It's the queen of all surgeries. It causes a smiley face to come across this part of your body. And my mom said, a Whipple? And he said, yes. And my mom, my mom was 74 years old. And she said, do you know, I just got my doctor's permission to have a Whipple surgery. And I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to turn to. And Jackie's husband did my mother's surgery. She lived another year and a half in that body. We sow seeds in a community of friends. In Christianity, we call it a church. It's from the Greek term ecclesia, meaning uh, assembly or group. In terms of the, the Buddhist tradition, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh defines community, which is known as Sangha in that particular tradition, as a group, listen to this, a group who practice together to encourage the best qualities in each other. To practice with the Sangha means to practice with those who are with you now and those who you love. If you move in the direction of transformation with yourself and with others, that is is what real Sangha is. That's why we're here in a community together. Thich Nhat Hanh goes on to say, I'm not talking about sympathy that encourages you to wallow in self-pity, indulge in griping, or act the part of a victim. Support is something that holds you up, not keeps you down. Support is loving encouragement as well as honest feedback. Without interacting with others, how will you know if you're really being loving and generous or closed-hearted or selfish? How will you know if you're honoring others and honoring yourself? I've always, as a mom, always wanted to say to my kids, you know, oh, thank you. I love being with you. Um, I adore you. You're just, you know, you're the light of the world and all the things that as moms we say to our kids. And just a few years ago, I remember I was living in Bradenton, Florida, taking care of my dad. My children, both of them, got on the phone with me and said something to me that they felt was really poignant that I needed to know. They said, you know, Mom, 
You're like the best at telling us that you love us. You're just the best at saying how you adore us and how proud you are. You know, but it would really be cool if you told us why. <laughs> or what it is that we have done. What it is that we've said, what it is that we have, you know, carried or brought to others in our lives so that we can be really clear about it. So what I got from them was be specific when you honor someone. Tell them what you're honoring them for. Tell them what you love about them. Even if it's the tiniest thing that you can find, find something. Find something to honor in another. Be specific. I love, I love going through the grocery line and telling, I watch the bag, the person who's bagging the groceries. They usually bring, when I remember, I bring my own bags, you know, and here are my bags. And I love watching the way that they look at the, look at the items and then they make decisions as to what to put where, you know, to really mindfully, I love watching and I love looking into their eyes and saying, I love the way you choose the heaviest objects to go on the bottom. I love that you leave my eggs in a place that I can carry them safely. I love that about you. And they, you know what happens to them, Right? They just shine. They just light up, and you know that when they go to the next person, they're going to be lit up like a, like a Christmas tree for them. There's enough slander and gossip and negativity in our world. You and I are here to hold each other and ourselves differently. In Galatians 6, it says, A person's harvest in life depends entirely upon what they sow. So, I'm going to suggest to you that is anybody, has anybody here ever talked behind someone's back? Thank you. There's an honest person right there. Yes. Talk behind someone's back, and you know what? So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to practice that. Go ahead and talk behind people's back. And when you talk about them, I want you to talk behind people's back about how fabulous they are. I want you to talk love behind people's back. I want you to talk health behind people's back. I want you to talk wellness behind people's back. I want you to talk right to their face about it too, but when they're not there, talk behind their back. And talk about how magnificently God is moving in their lives and you believe in them and miracles are always taking place. Telling someone their faults doesn't hold them up. It pulls them down. And when you do that, when we do that, when I do that, that is what they will say about us. That's how it works. So you and I have every reason to honor. You have every reason to honor your mother and your father, no matter what your relationship was or is with them. You have every reason to hold up your brothers and your sisters. Every reason, no matter what. You have every reason to support and speak lovingly about your former spouse. He or she may have done a thousand things that you did not particularly care for. And yet, especially with your children and your grandchildren, speak behind their backs of why it is that you were drawn to them and what you love about them that they might love in that way as well. For your attitude makes a huge difference. The situation may not be perfect. People may disappoint you, but you still have your life to live. And how you live it, the way you address it, your attitude, your attitude will promote you. I don't care what your job is. I don't care if you have a job. Your attitude will promote you in life, not because of people and not because of a situation at work, but because God will promote you in your life. And you will receive what it is that you give. Romans 12, 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. So let's you and I today set out, set out consciously and conscientiously to pour oils of honor everywhere we go and see how blessed your life will become. God bless you.